All right, let's get started drawing this dreidel. Um, the dreidel does have four different Hebrew symbols on it, um, and they represent the phrase, a great miracle happened here. Um, but I'm just gonna use these two. If you have favorites, you can use the ones that you like. For starters, let's add, we're gonna have a center line that comes down almost to the bottom of our paper. And I would say it starts about halfway down in our dreidel design. And then we're gonna add two shorter lines. And they're gonna be exactly the same place, but kind of a mirror image of one another. So there's our two lines on the side. Now let's connect this to this. So we're gonna go simply there. And then we'll do the same on the other side. So let's connect from that center out to the top of that line on the side. Then we can go from this line up to this corner. Ah, mine got a little pointy. Oh well, it's just how it's gonna be on this dreidel. Okay, so now it kind of looks like, what does this look like? I don't know. Anyway, then we'll do a line. We'll kind of pick a place here. We don't want to be halfway. We want to be maybe three quarters of the way down, but kind of give yourself a little dot there. And we'll go from this corner to that dot. And then we'll do the same thing other side. So from there up to that corner. And then we're gonna take a break from those lines. And we have this big top square. So find about where the center would be here. And we're gonna draw a little smile. This is gonna be the handle on our dreidel. And then up here toward the top of the paper, however tall you want this handle to be, you're gonna draw one going the other way. Then we'll connect those. So connect. Connect, and there's our handle. And then we can pretend we have another little dot right up here and we'll finish out the top of the dreidel, but we don't see that back point because the handle's in the way. So that's the basic dreidel shape. And then I am going to add like some little inset panels here you want your dreidel to just be very simple. You don't have to add any design to it. But I'm gonna add that little panel. So I'm simply echoing the lines that I have already put in here. Just tracing them very simply. There we go. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to draw the two letters that I thought would be, they give us a little bit of, like this one looks a little different than this one. Um, they don't look like the same letter. Um, and I feel like I can show you how to draw them. All right, this letter that we're gonna draw is none, which means nothing. So if you spin and you land on this, on your dreidel spin, you get nothing from the pot in the middle. All right. What I want you to notice is the angle of these lines is gonna be the same angle as this one. So let's do a couple of lines here and then we'll connect them at the end and then we'll connect them at this end. Then I can turn my paper back upright and I'm gonna go from this edge up and around. So it sort of looks like an L and then I'm gonna go from here up. But when I get here, I'm gonna swoop up like so. It almost looks like we're starting maybe a wine glass. And then this is sort of gonna follow the same slope of that line. So there is that character. And then I am gonna color mine all in black. So I'm not worried about this line here. All right, this is Shin. 
And if you, um, if you spin this on your dreidel, you have to put whatever you're playing with, you have to put a piece into the pot. All right, first, I'm gonna draw the little bar. And again, it's gonna be kind of parallel to the bottom. And then I'm gonna make, let's see, I want it to be about the same width as that. And then up here, so the little, the little, the little top parts kind of look like, uh, maybe like a lemon. So I'm gonna draw the three little top parts. So one, two, three. And they're, I mean, they're a little curvier than this at the top. So there's our three little top portions. And this one connects directly to the back of that bar. So it comes down just like this. This one is gonna go a little more over. And this very last one, we're gonna sort of come around and over and finish this out. So that is those two characters. And again, in mine, these are all gonna just be colored in dark. So I'll add my marker to them. You can do it now or you can do it after you paint. Um, and really, this is one that you could paint or you could add um, a Zentangle pattern to each of these sections, depending on what you enjoy more, what you want to do to your art. I'm just going to color these in. And then after that, we can get started with painting in the different sections of this dreamy dreidel. Any of our Jewish friends who celebrate Hanukkah are watching this during Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah. I'm happy that you have stopped in to do this with me. I'm just going to color this little symbol in all the way and then I will color in the other one as well. All right, so that one's done. <sighs> and then I'll color in this one. I don't know if you're already thinking about what colors you will be painting your dreidel. I was definitely thinking of going with some royal blue, maybe uh, some silver, and maybe some yellows and browns for a natural wood tone. But you could always make your dreidel a little more decorative. You could add some floral decor. You could make it polka dotted. Whatever you think would be the most fun. All right, now that these symbols are colored in, I'm gonna sign and my marker, and then I'm gonna go get my watercolors and get started painting. I'll be back. All right, I'm back and I am ready to paint. I think what I am going to do is start with like the top and the interior sections. That way we have this little border that it separates all the sections. And then at the very end, I'll go paint that border. Oh, top of my dreidel. What color will you be? I think the top of my dreidel will be some blues. 
and this is a time when you really can do whatever you want color wise so I'm going to add some blue and I'm going to just put my initial coat of blue in here on the top and then I can add more color if I want to as I work my way around this top. What I enjoy the most about painting things like this is we can paint in a base color and then we can play with our watercolor and we can mix it, we can get it all dreamy and bloomy. But first I'm simply telling my paint, look, this is your boundary for now. Please hang out in this area. So I'm going to try to get this whole top part wet. Then I can start doing my magical dreamy watercolory business. And I'm going to imagine in mine, you don't have to have a side of your dreidel where the light is falling, but I'm going to imagine that the light is over here. So maybe the stuff on this side is going to be a little bit lighter than the stuff on the other side. So I've got this part painted in and now I can start playing with adding darker color or maybe a second color to this section of my dreidel. I think I'm going to do that. I think I'm going to add some darker blue and I love to just watch that paint travel across the water. That is so fun to me. It's my favorite thing about watercolor is that it just is so soothing to watch as it makes its way across the paper. Joining the other paint. You can kind of dab as you go around. You can always add more water. If you need to take away water, if you've added too much water, then you can dry out your brush and sort of come back over any watery spots and your brush will just suck that paint and that water right up. Do I want to put any purple in here? I might, I'm going to put a little bit of this, uh, I like this indigo color. So I'm going to add a little purpley indigo here. Make this very, very dreamy looking and as this paint dries, I don't have to blend it really, really actively. Like I can just use the very tip of my brush because the water is going to carry all the pigments around and it's going to do whatever it wants. You can blend it as much as you want or as little as you want. And then when it dries, you'll have a little bit of variation in that color. All right. Gorgeous, just beautiful. I like it. All right, so I'm done with this section. Now I wanna paint the inside section because I don't wanna paint next to that area that is wet. That is too scary for me right now. I think I'm gonna go, I'm gonna stay in the blue family and I have this blue green that I love. So I'm gonna use this for this little block here. And I can paint over this. It's okay to paint over that um, because I know that it's a water fast marker. It's not a marker that's gonna smear or bleed when I put um, paint over it. Well, I hope it's not. If it does, that's just, that is just what's gonna happen. But I'm pretty sure it's a permanent one because I've used it before with watercolor and this is not really staying very light over here because I have not added enough water. So I'm going to bring some water back. So pretty, pretty, pretty. And sometimes when you have enough paint on the page, like you don't need any more color, you just need to move it around. You don't even have to go back into your paints. You can simply use the pigment that you've already brought to your paper. 
just like this. I'm staying in this little square over here. It's a square in real life, but you know, on the page, it's not a square. And then I'm going to add some of this lovely royal blue right here, just to bring it closer to that more traditional Hanukkah blue. Trying not to take too much artistic license with uh, a cultural object that is not from my my own specific culture. I want to make sure that I am not taking someone else's culture and just making it my own. Keep this beautiful blue here. And I'm just trying to keep it darker on one side, a little bit lighter on the other side. I like to just touch my brush down. Make sure I'm getting in all the little edges. Oh, this is looking great, I love it. I'm gonna bend my paper a little bit and see if I can get this paint to sort of run all around the areas where I put it. That worked great. <sighs> what should we do for the next section? Should we go maybe purple with blue? Maybe I'll start just with the royal blue over here. I love to watch that paint just travel across. That's so much fun. I've got my royal blue over on this side. Maybe I need just a little more just to make it nice and saturated over here. I'll bring in only water to paint this edge because I don't need any more dark color over here. Keeping it nice and light. And I can do this panel the same as I did uh, this panel, but I think I'm gonna bring a different color into it. I think I'm gonna go with actual purple. So then I'll dot my purple in over here to bring the darker color on this edge. And after this is all dry, I'm going to return and I will use like yellow and brown to make the middle parts of this look like they're wooden. And I think that is going to look really beautiful with these blues and purples. Because if we look at the color wheel, we will see blues and purples opposite the color wheel from our yellow. And that brown is just a nice neutral to bring in. Hello, puppy. My dog is visiting. All right, so now that purple is beautiful. And remember, our watercolor is going to dry lighter than we when we see it wet. So this won't be as completely dark. And then I think that black that I colored in the um, the letter characters with, the symbols, 
think that black will be a little more vibrant. So now I can paint these bottom sections and they can be wooden. What should we do? I'm going to make them kind of a wooden color. So I'm going to use brown and then I'll dot in maybe a little bit of yellow. And they can both be, I think they'll both be the same color. So I'm going to color them as one. Get into that little corner. Set my boundary line there. Nicely done. All right, so I have my brown. And what I will do after I get this brown painted in here is come back in with some yellow or some orange to kind of lighten up the brown and give it some warmth. When I think about a family hanging out, playing a game together like this, it makes me think of warmth and gathering for the holidays and all of the laughter and the, I don't know about your family, but when we play games at the holidays, we definitely um, have some competition, we have some, com <gasps> some competitive people. Oh, you know what? The uh, mail delivery is here, so that means we have to bark. My apologies for the barking dog. Oh goodness. Those dogs have to keep us very, very safe from the postal workers and the um, delivery trucks. Yes. And as we say, to the credit of our dogs, we have yet to be overtaken here in our home, our castle, by the postal delivery people or the delivery service drivers. So technically the dogs are keeping us very safe. All right, now let's see, maybe I'll use a little orange down here in this brown. And I'm gonna add some orange kind of all throughout this one. Just to warm it up. It's gonna stay a brown color, but I'm gonna warm it up by adding this orange. When I get really close to the edge, I like to use the very tip of my brush because that's where it's the sharpest. And I feel like I have a little more control. And then over on this side, I'll add some yellow. Maybe I'll put some yellow over here too. I mean, it's just gonna make it warmer and glowier. But I think I'm not gonna add any orange to this section because I want them to have a little bit of different personalities. Just a tiny bit different. There we go, so there's the bottom. And then I need everything else to be very, very dry before I go back in and paint other parts because I don't want my paint to run. So what would be, let's see, I think this would be my, my best chance of having something dry. Um, so I'm gonna fan, I'm gonna fan up here just to get this nice and dry. Look at me go, I'm so fast. You can also wait, do this later, or if you have like a little hair dryer, um, you can do that. I am going to wait because I don't, I don't know if I trust this paint to be dry enough for me to paint over here. So I'm gonna wait and then I'll be back when that's dry. All right, so we're all dry and I am now going to paint the leftover parts. I'm gonna start with the little spinner handle and I think I'm gonna go with yellow. I'll start with yellow. I might add some more color once I get the yellow in there and see what I think. So I'm treading very lightly there on the edge where I'm close to the painted sections because I just don't want any little painty accidents. And this yellow is a very bright color, so it you can't see the edges very clearly, which I think then makes it okay to not paint to the very edge sometimes if there's a treacherous situation. All right, so there's my yellow. 
this definitely is going to need some brown to it. This is way too yellowy. So I'm going to add just a little bit of brown and I'll start on my side that would be maybe a little bit darker and just add that brown down around the side. And then I'm, I can push it over to the center or I can just let it make its way over there. Either is fine. So I'm rinsing my brush and I'm just adding a little bit more water where the brown and the yellow meet. And I really like the way this is turning out. I might even add just a tiny bit more of that brown. Whoa, that was a lot of brown. All right. Oh goodness, that was a lot of brown. All right, well, I'm just gonna deal with it. So, same thing. I'm just gonna dab that brown in there, stay along the edge. Head up along this edge. And then I'll tap it in here about halfway. And I can move some of that yellow over into the brown. So we can go yellow into the brown. So I'm moving my yellow over into the brown to ask the brown to please stay on this side. Thank you so much. And I can also ask the brown to stay on that side by leaning my paper that way. <laughs> if you want it to come over to this side, you can lean your paper this way. But I would like my brown to stay over there and kind of toward the bottom. So that is working out nicely. I like the way that's looking. And I'm going to probably use a very similar technique here in these um, the little square parts because I want them to be that nice golden color as well. And these don't take a lot of paint and they definitely don't take a lot of water. So I'm trying to be very thoughtful about that as I work through these little tiny sections. And I have a little bit of blue coming over into this one, but that's all right. I think we'll be just fine. And because we don't put a lot of water in here, it can be a little more difficult to blend but I'll show you in just a minute how I'm gonna handle that. So I've got my yellow painted in there. And then I'm gonna go into, let's see, do I want brown or orange? I'll get a little brown. I'm just getting a tiny, tiny bit of brown. And I'll go up the side there and down around the corner. So just sort of up one side and around those corners. And I'm not gonna add much brown over here. I'm gonna leave it to be on that edge. And then I wanna make sure that this is dry before I start on the next one. So I'll fan just a little bit more. And I'm just trying to fan this yellow edge, really. I'm not worrying about any of the others because I know they're already dry. <laughs> And since I didn't use a lot of paint, we are probably just good to go. All right, I'm going to paint this one pretty much the same way I painted the other one. So I'll bring my yellow down. And over here. I'm getting the tiniest bit of yellow on my brush, tiny, tiny bit. and down here. And this yellow is so light that you can't really see if I am filling in the whole part or not. And that's exactly what I want. And then I'm gonna get my the tiniest bit of brown and I will add that to this edge here. Bring it over a tiny bit. I don't want too much brown because then what will happen is this will look very brown, but I want it to look very like 
warm yellow and golden. There we go. And then if you want to, just for a little final touch, you can grab some brown, a very light kind of a watered down brown, and you can put a little texture down in this section if you want to, like little stripes. So I'm gonna do that, because this is kind of where we have that wood grain. Ooh, I like the way that looks. Okay, I'm gonna, how, do, how am I gonna do this? So it's like they all have the same point of origin, but they have different end points. And when this dries, it's not going to be quite as um, contrasty, so that'll be nice. It's just going to give us a little bit of pattern right here. Here we go. And we can do a little pattern maybe also up here. Just to show that this is round. That's not really dry enough to add pattern to most of it yet, but that's okay. We can just add to what's showing. And I love it. I think it looks great. And you know that I do like a speckle. I love speckles. So if you want to throw some speckles on here, you can. And I'll show you how I do that. So in the lid of my paint pan, I'm going to mix some like blue, bluish purple, whatever. But I want it to be very watery, right? Um, if you had gold, that would be beautiful. If you had actual sparkly gold or sparkly silver, really, it would be amazing. Um, but I don't. So that's not what's happening. All right, so I've got some speckles and I'm just gonna tap my brush and they're gonna go all over my dreidel. They're gonna go all around <sighs> because this is a very festive thing. It's a party, we're loving it. I'll add some yellow since we have pretty yellow in our dreidel. Oh yeah. I really do wish I had some silver. I may go, I may go root around in my supplies here in a minute and see if I can dig out some silver because I think that would just be beautiful. All right, so now we're super festive. Oh my gosh, they're right here. Okay, I do. I have, so I have some pearl watercolors. Ooh, look at that. Fantastic. So I'm going to make like uh, a silver color. So let's get some of the regular pearl. I'll put this in here. So I'm going to get the, it's a regular, like a white, white pearl color. And then I'll get a little bit of the, what would we call that? It's like a pewter, maybe black pearl, but it's not really black. It's more of a grayish. And I'll mix that together to get some silver. Gorgeous. And then we'll do some Fabulous silver speckles. Yes. I mean, this is just really a dog barky tutorial. I apologize. All right. So then maybe I'll also splash some of the, just that pearly color on here. It gives it that very shiny, kind of magical feeling. Oh, I have some blue too. Now I'm just going bananas with speckles, which is not, a new phenomenon. I do that a lot. I like speckles are awesome. I love them. I do need to kind of keep the speckles off all the other things on my desk. All right. So then inside the handle here, some of my speckles got away from me a little bit. So I'm just going to re-wet them and zigzag my wet brush through them to make them a little less messy looking. There we go. All right, so that is my dreidel. I'm gonna close this paint up. Did I put anything watery on the top? I didn't. Okay, and there we go, friends. That's the dreidel. I hope yours is turning out well. Um, happy Hanukkah to all of you. And I hope that you'll join me again to do more fun painting and drawing.